Hello and welcome to this extended video about leveling up characters. We have completed season three and now it's time to level up. In the past, we've done this kind of off screen, but um, a lot of you guys were interested in going through the process. So today we're gonna level up Samantha's character oh. with um, <laughs> with a rogue. This is going from level four to level five. So if you're following along in your D and D player's handbook, we're on page ninety five, the rogue. So Sam, yes. you could see on this handy dandy chart as you go from fourth level to fifth level, mm -hmm. several things happen. Number one, probably the biggest, is your proficiency bonus goes to plus three. So let's start with that. Change that proficiency bonus. We're gonna go up to plus three. Now, people at home, when you have a proficiency bonus change, what that means is that all of the things that are affected by proficiency bonus must be reviewed and then evaluated and then increased. So let's go straight down a character sheet from where the proficiency bonus box is. We can go straight down. So you look at your saving throws first. Mm -hmm. The things that you have proficiency in must now be modified. So dexterity, yes. you have a circle there. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna take your proficiency bonus of three plus your dex bonus of five, and that's gonna become plus eight, which is huge. That's a huge dex saving throw. Um, then your intelligence. Mm -hmm. we, so true. as a rogue, you get a saving throw um, proficiency with intelligence. That's plus two, plus three is now plus five. Plus five. Plus five. Okay. So with that in mind, then we're going to go down the line of the um, actual skills. Okay? okay. So anything that gets a proficiency bonus must be recalculated. Okay. In this case, you have... Your, anything with a black dot next to it, mm -hmm. so your acrobatics now becomes plus eight instead of plus seven. Ooh, ooh. And then going down the line to, what's that, athletics? athletics. Okay, so you got a five, and then what? And then history. history. That comes from your background of being a noble, ooh. so that becomes a plus four. And then investigation. investigation. But notice how it says X, yes. EX. You might remember that you took expertise. Oh, yes. So a rogue gets expertise when they first start off in two different skills. And in this case, you chose investigation and, and stealth. stealth. So your investigation now, because it's expertise, you double the proficiency bonus. And then you add in the modifier for investigation, which is intelligence. Ooh. So now it's three times two is six plus that plus one, so you have a plus seven. Mm hmm So especially with a rogue, when you have expertise in something and you get to fifth level, it, that's a big marker. Same thing when you get to ninth level and your proficiency bonus goes up to plus four. Yeah. All right, let's go down the list. Perception now mm -hmm. is four instead of three. Then what? Persuasion. Persuasion. Okay, so that's five. And then sleight of hand. Sleight of hand is eight. And stealth is going to be absolutely ridiculous because that's your other expertise. So it's six plus five is 11. You now have a stealth of 11. Oh my God. Which is um, just crazy. Yeah. So that's all of your proficiency. So after you update that, then we take a look at something like hit points. Mm. So in most D&D games, at first level, you get your maximum number of hit points yes. plus your con bonus. So right here on the corner of page 95, it would say 1D8 plus your con modifier for first level. I do that for all the way up through level five. And okay. after that, you'd have to roll an actual 1D8 and then add your con. So okay. since this is the last level where you get my maximum thing, mm -hmm. it's easy to calculate. Okay. It's basically 1d8, so 8, plus your con bonus, which is 3. So that's 11 per level. Yes. At 5th level, that would mean 55 hit points. So you could erase all this foolishness, and right up there, where you have 40 whatever it is for, make that 55, and then put like a circle around. 
So your new max hit points is 55. Now, if you gain a level after this, you'll actually roll a 1d8. Okay. And then add your com modifier. Okay. The next thing, so if you look at that chart for fifth level, yes. Okay. <laughs> good, good call. So change that to level five. You are now rogue five. Ooh. So at fifth level, the other thing that's huge for rogues, this is enormous, your sneak attack damage goes from 2d6 to 3d6 now. Okay, so right under here, sneak attack, 3d6. Just like anywhere under your weapons. <clears throat> so that, um, that's a game changer, really. Because when you're, when you're a rogue and you flank an opponent, you don't even have to have advantage. But if you have like an ally attacking someone and you flank, mm -hmm. now your normal rapier damage, you're going to add in 3d6. It's, it's That's massive. so crazy. Massive. That's awesome. All right, the next and last thing is the feature of expertise. Oh, sorry, uncanny dodge. So on page 96 is uncanny dodge. Mm -hmm. Starting at fifth level, when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you could use your reaction to have the attack's damage against you. So let's think of a scenario. Let's say you're fighting and some creature hits you with a sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and I roll, and it's gonna be eight damage, yeah. you can immediately interrupt and say, uncanny dodge. So then it only does four damage? It only does four damage. Oh, that's so awesome. So write down uncanny dodge here, because we're running out of space. So underneath sneak attack, just write down uncanny dodge, and then next to it, just be like, um, yeah, reaction equals half damage. Mm -hmm. which is supremely dope. It, so basically awesome. what that is in a story kind of way is a rogue at this level is becoming so good in combat and so fast with their reaction that they're anticipating someone's attack. So like a sword might hit them, yeah. but then they're like just at the last minute, they like twist out of the way so it doesn't cut deep, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's huge. Um, and also it's not just swords. When an attacker that you can see, so let's say somebody's down, you know, at the other end of the room and they shoot an arrow at you. You yeah. can kind of like turn and just uncanny dodge that so it doesn't do as much damage. So there are a lot of different ways that that can help you. Now, Does that work with like an Eldritch Blast and stuff? Like yes, that? as okay. long as you could see who's attacking you. The okay. idea is that like the rogue sees somebody, you know, almost like not in slow motion, but like you see somebody attacking you mm -hmm. and you're anticipating and dodging like kind of out of the way okay. as it's happening. Um, where you can't use that is if someone's invisible and attacking you mm -hmm. before you know that they're there. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody cast a darkness spell. Okay. And in that darkness spell, you can't see and they stab you in the darkness. Ooh. That That's an issue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, the other thing that we're going to want to do, even though we've done most of the basic leveling up stuff, we want to just review to make sure that we've got everything covered, right? So because your proficiency bonus changed, that affects your attacks. So where it says rapier, mm -hmm. that's going to now be a plus eight because you get your three for proficiency and your five for dex. So change that to plus eight to hit. And the damage is still the same, but the two hit is now higher. Same thing with claws. So you're going to have uh, three plus five is... Actually, I think your claws might be a melee attack. I don't know if that's plus eight. I don't know if your claws come from your strength or not, but either way you'd have proficiency. So, and I think it would be... I think your claws... Hmm, I'm going to have to look this up. Okay. I think your clause is based on strength and not dex, but I'll look that okay. up. Uh, I don't have that book in front of me. But let's check your other stuff. So your feline agility, that doesn't get changed. Mm -hmm. Oh, cat's claws. Climbing speed of 20. Claws attack is 1d4 yeah, strength. plus strength. Okay. Okay. So, but that's okay. So what it means, though, because you're proficient in claws, obviously, mm -hmm. it means your strength bonus of 2 and then the plus 3 for proficiency bonus. So you actually have a plus 5 to hit. I don't know where we got that, but it's plus five to hit with your claws. Okay. And then it's 1d4 plus two All right. for your claws. 
Okay. Um, cunning action, that stays the same. Fast hands, we that's your sleight of hand ability to like bump someone um, and do things faster with a bonus action than what normally someone would have to take a full round. Second story work is the same thing. It's you gain the ability to climb faster than normal. Um, and when you make a running jump, the distance you cover increases. So that's not affected by your proficiency bonus. So basically, that's it. Leveling up a rogue is kind of super easy mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. Um, with your basic studded leather armor and your dexterity bonus, you have a 17 to armor class. Your initiative is plus five. We should have changed that before. Because at fourth level, you used your ability score improvement to increase your dex. So mm -hmm. you actually have a plus five to initiative. Okay. Um, and everything else stays the same. Okay. And now you're ready for the summer sessions. Yeah. Woohoo! So that's it, people. That's uh, leveling up a rogue from level four to level five. Pretty easy. But always a good idea to just review your whole sheet. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the fans in the comments yeah. were like, oh, she forgot to do this or that. And part of that's my fault because I didn't go through everything as thoroughly, I think. But what we just did took maybe like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. And, and now it's done and it's updated. So it's always good to kind of review your whole character sheet, all your numbers and your proficiencies and your saving throws and your initiative and all that stuff is done and caught up and now it's ready for playtime. So you will see Samantha next on the summer sessions. What she'll be doing, who she'll be with. Oh, you'll have to wait and see for that one. But as always, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more awesomeness coming here on the channel soon. Peace out, love you, bye.